Hi everyone and welcome back. I am Professor Hall and today we're going to be talking about technical writing and audience. Um, this is the first of a two-part lecture about audience. The second part we're going to be looking more specifically at examples and how to edit depending on what audience you're trying to reach. But this is um, going into a little bit more depth on audience. If you watched my previous lecture, I talked about professional writing in general, how it's different from um, personal writing. Um, our first lecture, we talked about how it's different from things like creative writing and expository writing. That's that classic college composition. Um, so with the professional writing, we talked a little bit and gave an overview about audience purpose and tone and today we're going to look at audience specifically in a little bit more depth where last time we looked at tone so who is your audience um, in professional writing typically your audience falls under two umbrellas so you have people inside of your organization co-workers supervisors people who are maybe your employees and then there's individuals who are outside of your organization clients vendors potential customers etc in professional and business writing you really have to consider which group you're writing to and what that group needs. So what does your audience need to know? How can you help them? And what are the implications when you write to them? If you remember from my previous lectures, a lot of technical writing and professional writing as well um, is aimed at clarifying information. So unlike other academic writing you might have done for your other classes, for the most part, this isn't to encourage debate or discussion, right? So you really have to think about what your audience knows, what they don't know, and how you can explain things more clearly. After we talk about audience in these two lectures, we're going to talk a little bit more about clarity and conciseness and then proofreading, which also increases clarity and conciseness, right? But there's other things that go along with audience as well. Oops, sorry about that. So your audience is going to change depending on the situation. So how is technical writing different in this sense? Well, in technical writing, your tone is always going to be neutral and professional, sometimes even a little bit dry, sometimes slightly upbeat. Before writing, you have to analyze your intended audience and determine their level of expertise. Don't really have to do that as much in academic writing, right? You're writing for your professor, you're writing for other people in that field. But in technical writing, are you writing as, as the, the image here, are you writing to clients? Are you writing to the, the other people? You're making a business plan for other people in your company. That's gonna really determine your audience. So typically your audience is going to fall into four categories. Experts, technicians, executives, and non-specialists. And we're going to talk about each one of these groups and what their needs are. So experts. Here is an example, I'm not going to read the whole thing, <laughs> of a document really for experts. Philosophy of computer science. Description. The philosophy of computer science is concerned with those ontological methodology methodological and ethical issues that arise from within the academic discipline of computer science as well as the practice of software development. So you can see even here we have these terms ontological, methodological, ethical, academic. These are some words that indicate we're dealing with a document really for an expert audience. Experts know the business or organization and the theory of the product inside and out, right? So something like the philosophy of computer science, unless it's a textbook um, where it's trying to encourage people in that field to become more expert, right? It build up their expertise. This is something that is really for the expert. It's looking at the theory of computer science, right? The, the methodology, the ethical nature of it. Experts have designed the product, they've tested the product, they know everything about it. 
or if it's a different type of business i know some of you are in um, accounting uh, you know the expert is the person who created the software or the expert is the person who is running the company that creates the software the um, if you're in education the expert might be the person who's the superintendent or the principal right they're they're more aware of the ins and outs of the education system they have advanced degrees they may operate in business and academic settings in research um, a lot of times experts will be in the area of development so they'll be in government or technology but they're really um, the people kind of behind the scenes running things developing things creating things So then we have technicians, and here is a little thing about computers for a technician, right? This is about JavaScript. It's talking about the Java tag and where it's placed and the body of the element on the web page. A little bit different and a different type of expertise than the true experts. The true experts might know all about JavaScript. They might not even need, you know, a book or a reference guide if they're doing coding, but they're also the people who understand the theories behind why things are done, right? With a technician, these are the people who build and operate and repair or maintain the systems. So the experts design and theorize about these systems. The technicians are the people who do the operation after the design. Um, they maintain things after the design. They possess highly technical knowledge, but their focus is often more practical than theoretical. So they're not necessarily the people who are then coming up with um, a new program, a new app, a new product, right? But they are the people who understand um, if the developer, the expert wants an app created um, and is doing that, maybe they're the people that go in and fix the bug, right? They might work in some areas like as some of the same areas as experts, business, academia, technology, or government, but they may work at a little bit of a lower level. So a director, a developer, a technician, instead of being the CEO. Or they may work at a different company. So you might have a computer repair shop um, versus an expert developer at Microsoft. Executives. This is um, a clip here about how to optimize an app store page. So for people who sell apps, it explains a little bit how to store a page, how to come up with some pleasing, catchy icon, use screenshots that convey selling points, right? That's going to hit that executive audience. Executives are people who make decisions about the products created by experts and technicians. They're likely to have little technical knowledge on the subject as non-experts. So if this is not someone who, if they're selling an app, they may not know how to go in and actually fix the bugs, right? Like the technician would. And quite frankly, a lot of times they might not know about the theory. Why do we set it up in this way as opposed to this way? However, they do have expertise in other areas. So things like business, economics, marketing, administration, law, government, politics. A lot of times executives are concerned about how much money a product will make. What's the ROI? We talked about that before. That's the return on investment. So <clears throat> for a lot of you, if you go into technical writing, this may be the audience for which you're writing. Um, we're going to look at later on in our course how to write an executive summary, how to incorporate that into your um, larger document. We talked a little bit before already, if you watched it, about summaries and responses, right? You may be writing for an executive translating information sometimes from experts and technicians for the executive audience. So for example, the expert might be um, at, we'll go over here, 
to a little icons of our apps. Maybe the expert is over at Netflix and they're deciding whether or not to keep, um, at the moment, Netflix has a, a, a kind of like a warning, right? When you've watched too many shows, they're just like, do you want to keep watching? It's a little prompt. So maybe the expert is talking about the philosophy behind that and how it gives people a cognitive break. It allows people to uh, stop watching though. And so maybe if they want people to continue watching, they might want to take that out. What are the what are the real reasons psychologically behind having that button? The technician is going to be the person who says, well, if we don't want to have it, here's the algorithm we can use to get rid of it, right? And the executive is going to say, okay, if we get rid of that button, how is that going to affect our income? So if we t prompt people to stop watching and they do, will they switch to a different show? Will they turn it off altogether? Will they watch less? Or do people like having that reminder? They pause it, they walk around for a little bit, and then they come right back to watching more Netflix, right? The executive cares about how the investment is going to be affected or they might they might care about how it affects um a, no not with that example but for something else um let's say how things are put into a cart into amazon which is another app that is right over here um the legalities of a one-click buying system that's something that the executives might be concerned with the non-specialists, rescue time, use your time wisely. So this is about an app, but it, it's explaining it for a non-specialist. Sometimes these are called end users. The person who downloads the app, that's the end user. If you're having doubts about using your time sensibly, this app can send you weekly reports to indicate things that are stealing your time. You might be shocked to discover how much time you're actually wasting. A non-specialist reader has the least technical knowledge of all. They want to use the product to accomplish their tasks. They want to understand the new technology to know whether they should purchase it or not. So if they um, they want to use it, they want to understand it, sort of. They're, you're typical non-specialist now there are people in my audience right now who are in computer science or in cyber security um, and you're thinking oh no that's not me well of course it's not you you're training to be a technician you're possibly training to be an expert right um, the non-specialist are the other people in my audience right now they for the most part um, you know when it comes to technology especially we're not concerned about the algorithm, right? If a problem happens with my phone, me as a non-expert, I'm not going to necessarily need to know or want to know which little wires need to go in which little places, right? What I do need to know is, hey, don't drop your phone in a lake, dummy, right? <laughs> um, or in a pile of snow, as did happen to me a few years ago. There might, they may be curious about specific technical matter, but they want to learn about it possibly for no specific practical reason. So let's say I want to know, you know, how does this app exactly work? That there's no practical reason for that. I'm not going to be repairing the app or maintaining it or fixing the bugs or rewriting the code. For many of you, this will be the primary audience for the documents you write. So a lot of times, technical writing is for executives or for non-specialists. Now, if you get a degree in technical writing or if you take other classes on tech writing and then also you become an expert in your field, then you might be writing for experts or technicians. But a lot of times you're going to be writing for non-specialists, either end users, the people who buy the product, or executives, the people who are selling the product. So again, this audience, sometimes I'll refer to it as a lay person, a lay audience, the end user, if you're talking about a product in particular. So how do we analyze our audience and figure out what group they fall into? It's important to determine which of the four categories you're, represent your potential audience. Sometimes you might actually have two audiences. So my primary audience, that's the first person that I'm writing to, the first group of people, 
and then a secondary audience, the, the people who might also happen to look at it. Your primary audience is your target audience, the people who you specifically want to read your work. Um, I talk about this in college composition, and it can be a little bit more difficult there because if you have a book or let's say a website, if you have a website, anybody can go on the website and read it, right? But it might be aimed for a specific audience. So we're going to talk about demographics in a minute, but let's say it's for news and it's looking more at conservative news. Maybe they have a little bit of an older reader. Maybe that reader is also predominantly a male audience, right? But that to determine a website's audience, you have to look a lot at what their content is, what their subtext is, which we talked about in our first um, presentation. That with technical and professional writing, you don't have as much connotation or subtext. So words literally mean what they mean, right? There's not a lot of slant. There's not a lot of um, persuasion or argument there. And because of that, you really need to know before you write who your audience is going to be and who you want to target. And we're going to, as I said, in our next in our next slideshow, our next video, we're going to look a little bit more at um, editing for a target audience. Your secondary audience is the group of people that might also read your work. So, for example, if you have a presentation as this woman does here um, with her projected numbers going up um, <laughs> maybe that is mostly meant for her boss right it's mostly meant for her supervisor but all her co-workers are there as well so her supervisor is her primary target audience that executive audience her co-workers may be more non-specialists right colleagues or people in her field that's her secondary audience so a lot of times you have to think about both your target and your secondary you should also think about characteristics. So regardless of which of these four categories your audience falls into, you should also think about things like background. We're going to talk about each one of these in a moment, but background includes knowledge, experience, education, and training, their needs and their interests, and their demographics. Background. How much knowledge, experience, or training can you expect of your readers? If you are writing something like instructions or a manual for an end user, you really have to assume that they do not have a lot of knowledge, experience, or training. If you're writing an executive summary, you can assume that the executive that you're writing to, your supervisor, has quite a bit of knowledge. Hopefully, <laughs> if you have a good boss, um, they'll have a lot of knowledge, right? So if you expect some of your readers lack background, you might need to explain certain terms and processes. So something um, like a, an acronym that's typically used in your company say BGT for budget right that's a pretty common one if you're writing something for your supervisor or your boss you probably can just use that acronym right if you're writing something for someone with less expertise an employee underneath you then you might have to write that word out Imagine writing a guide for end users about using an app that runs one way on an iPhone and a different way on an Android. You can probably expect that your readers know which type of phone they have, but they might not know the intricacies of their phone. So you may have to explain how to go into settings, how to allow notifications, how to enable location services, how to change privacy settings, right? All of those things may have to be in your instructions. It's quite a different document than one for a business executive about what segment of the population will be likely to download the app or use money for in-app purchases. So again, thinking about that background and really what that means is putting yourself in the mind of your reader. Needs and interests. I like this little diagram. It's quite old. You can tell by the pixelation there, but positions are what we say we want, interests are what we really want, and needs are what we must have. And sometimes this this is uh, 
it looks like an egg, you know, this diagram. Sometimes you might have something like a Venn diagram um, where, there we go. This is what we say we want. This is what we actually need. And here's what we have an interest in hearing, right? So you kind of have to hit that sweet spot doing the crossover in the Venn diagram or getting, you know, here to like the yolk of the egg as it were. To plan your document, you really have to know what your audience is going to expect from your document. What do they think that they will learn or what are they hoping can be clarified? You're informing them, you're clarifying information, you're clearing things up. Imagine what your readers will want to use your document for, what they will demand from it. So what do they need, most of all, and then what are they interested in? And possibly does it come out here to what they say they want, but what they aren't really going to read. For example, imagine you're writing an online manual on how to use a new social media site. What would your readers expect to find in it? I would think for that example, um, how do I connect with people? How can this, um, a lot of people use things like Instagram to uh, partner with companies and kind of model their products, right? Um, can I do that on this new social media site? Or will it be different? Will it be not commercialized? Can I expect ads? What are the privacy settings going to be? Those are some of the things that I would wonder about as a non-specialist. I would be interested in connecting with people, but I would really need to know maybe what my privacy settings are. I would possibly say, oh, I like social media and I want to get out there and I want to be seen and I want to increase my social media capital, but maybe that's not actually what I need. Imagine you're under contract to write a background report on global warming for a national real estate association. So they might need to know there um, how the weather is going to affect their buildings, how they can use green materials um, that don't affect global warming. So things like bamboo flooring, where um, bamboo grows very quickly and is a renewable resource, as opposed to something like walnut flooring, which walnut trees take quite a long time to grow, right, as do oak trees. So that is a place where you really have to think about you know, not only their background, what they know, but what they need from your report. And a lot of times this comes down to things being practical. Is it practical? Does it relate to me? That's what I need to know. What do readers want to read about? And equally, what do they not want to read about? What can you leave out or omit? Demographics. Geography, age, profession, income. Demographics are the characteristics about your reader. How do these characteristics have an influence on how you write and design your document? So, for example, age groups, types of residents, um, where people live, gender, political preferences. You know, a lot of times things like that are left out of technical writing. Um, because people would say, well, things should really be written for people of both genders or, um, or all genders, rather, or it shouldn't matter what stage of life cycle this is in. But we're really going beyond the old definition where technical writing was just manual and instructions, right? And using certain words can hit people in certain ways. So you want to be careful about your language. So, for example... A manual, in this instance, for a computer would be written for a general audience, as I said, regardless of demographics. But if some users are not native English speakers, you might have to clarify terms. You might have to use more simplified sentence structures. We're going to look at something in our next presentation um, that was meant for both American and Canadian um, readers. But when you look at the directions, they can be very confusing depending on which country they the the end user lives in or you might have a document for parents about a child locator app that focuses on safety we're going to look at one again in our next presentation so looking at age lifestyles why people might want that um, what it means to keep their kids safe 
convincing them possibly to purchase or use this app. You might write a summary of a government survey that focuses on one particular political party's accomplishments. So even though you're trying to keep bias out of your document, um, you know that that's the demographic, right? Whoever is in that political party is the demographic for what you're writing. So when you have more than one audience, you're likely to find a report or other piece of writing is for more than one audience. We talked about this just a second ago, primary and secondary. For example, it might be seen by technical people, experts and technicians, and administrative people, executives. So what should you do in that case? You can write all the segments of your report so that your audience can understand them. Or you could write a section strictly for the audience interested in it. So you could have something, you know, you don't you don't put the heading on it like executive uh, report versus like technical report. Or maybe you do. You can have an executive summary at the top. Um, you can have a section that says um, income or um, funding right that would hit the executives more technical requirements would hit the technical people more so i always recommend having things like headings and subheadings um, sections and subsections so that your audience can flip to the part that is the most important to them um, a lot of times in education i have seen this as well so they'll have something like um, maybe we'll get something about the budget well, the person in charge of building in grounds is going to have a lot different um, interests and needs than I as a faculty member have, right? My interest in the budget might be regarding salary changes, or my interest in the budget might be how much money do we have for scholarships for students? How much money do we have for um, clubs? I'm also a club advisor, right? So if things are labeled in that way, I can flip to that part of the budget that I need to see. And I don't necessarily need to worry about um, you know, whether they have the money to improve the bathroom on the fourth floor of a building that I don't go into. So relevant information is really what we're getting at there. Audience variability. So you might realize that even if your audience falls into one category, their backgrounds will vary widely. Um, demographics it, of executives might be quite diverse, right? Same thing with technicians or non-specialists. So if you write to the lowest common denominator, that sounds really horrible, um, of reader, you might end up with a cumbersome, tedious book-like report that turns off a majority of readers. And lowest common denominator in this case just means the person with the least amount of expertise. But you don't want to dumb it down too much. And if you don't write to the lowest level of your readers, what will you do? So what I always recommend is if you think about, let's put this little bell curve here. Okay, boop, boop. We do this for grades a lot too. So here are the people who really know absolutely nothing. Here are the people who are experts, right? You can see if put in here, you can see that that's a small portion. If I aim for the middle part here, I should have switched colors, but that's okay. If I aim for the middle part here, I'm going to hit the majority of people, right? So I might not get the little segment that's very confused, but maybe they can call in. Um, maybe I can put information there where they can go on a website for further help, right? And the people who are here and the experts um, they might not necessarily read the entire thing. Maybe they just skim and look for the headings that are pertinent to them, right? So if you go for the majority of readers and sacrifice the minority that needs more help, a lot of people put supplemental information for that lower end of reader. Um, as I said, 
a beginner book, um, cross references, you can have an appendix. So you can say, um, for more information on this, see appendix A, and then people can go to appendix A and that's where the stuff is for beginners, right? Or they can go to a website for more information, or they can call the help desk, or they can do live chat with somebody if they need extra help. Like let's say they're doing troubleshooting, right? So here's our recap. Technical writing is different from professional writing in the way it considers audience. In professional writing, we usually just look at people inside our organization and people outside our organization. That's for things like memos, resumes, cover letters, um, emails, that kind of thing. When you're writing reports and feasibility reports or um, a proposal or you're doing an informative presentation, you're writing an, a summary, Usually your audience is going to fall into the category of experts, technicians, executives, and non-specialists. Before writing, you need to know what category you're writing to, your primary audience. You need to understand their backgrounds, needs, interests, and demographic characteristics. And if you're writing to more than one audience or an audience with varied backgrounds and needs, you can aim your work for the majority of readers. So that is it for this presentation. And stay tuned because coming right up is part two in which we will discuss how specifically to edit for these four categories, how you can change your verbiage, um, your wording, break up sentences and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. And I look forward to reading your work. Thanks.